welcome to the Jim Jeffries podcast. I'm Jim Jeffries. Please subscribe and rate this podcast and come and see me on tour this week. I Well, this weekend, I'll, November 10th and 11th, I'll be in Toronto at the Sony Centre for Performing Arts. And December 1st, I'll be at the, how do I say this, the Agro Caliente. Agua Caliente. In Rancho Cucamonga. No, it's not. It's Rancho Mirage. Oh, California. Rancho Mirage. Okay. <laughs> and December 2nd, I'll be at the Celebrity Theatre in Phoenix. Ooh, you'll never know who you might see. The Celebrity Theatre in Phoenix. All the, all the celebrities in Phoenix yeah. will be out there just sweating their yeah. fucking balls off. In Tucson, all, they have the non-celebrity theatre, not as popular. So also, we added extra shows in the UK, January 24th in London at the Hammersmith Apollo, and in Manchester at the Manchester Apollo on January the 25th. You can get tickets at jimjeffries.com. I am joined, as I always am joined, by Forrest Shaw. Say hello, Forrest. What's up? And we have a very special guest who didn't actually come and see the show. No. Was it wasn't a show. A friend of mine who didn't come and see the show. <laughs> I wasn't invited. You were invited. Like, it happens before the podcast. You were like, can I come and do your podcast? And I'm like, fucking sure, thinking you'd come and see the no. show. Because all we do is talk about this show. Uh, Mr. Jack Whitehall. I, I thought I was arriving to see the show and then do the podcast. And What I time did you arrive? Finish. I arrived at two. Oh, that's too late. I do you want to? Okay. Do you want to give any background talking? on our guest before you just keep going? <laughs> Jack White. Jack Whitehall <laughs> is a British movie star, comedian. I'll say comedian first. Stand-up comedian, movie star, sex symbol. Many would say. Wow. And big celebrity in Phoenix. Big celebrity. So I'm going to be in Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, big celebrity. And, and, and he's only in town because he's doing um, uh, James Corden show. No, and he's going to do no. Conan. Uh, what else are you in town for? I'm here to um, break Hollywood. Oh, and this oh, was the week that Hollywood I is the name of a prostitute. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys I, go back though. You guys, you guys have known each other. We've, I've yeah. known Jack since Jack was a sprightly, probably seventeen yeah, year old. Yeah, I. Met How old are you now? Young. I'm twenty nine now. You're twenty. Yeah. I've known you for that long. I've yeah. known you for a very long time. You're 29. Yeah. You took me under I, your wing at Edinburgh I, I, Festival. I, I, I took him under my drunken wing. Yeah. And it, and it, and it was, this, is, this is the UK, so you're allowed to do that with 17-year-olds. <laughs> Over here, that would seem like a very un, un, uh, bad thing to do. Um, and you just started at 17? And I just started, yeah. And you started at 17. I thought you were a bit younger. I thought you were like 14 or something. Four, I was, yeah. I mean, I looked about 14. I mean, I still don't look. How's, you, how's your brother Barney? Yeah, Barney. He's, how's Barney yeah, doing? He's he's actually in America. He's on a road trip with his girlfriend. They're in San Francisco. I'm just surprised you, that Barney has a girlfriend. Things are <laughs> looking up for everybody. You love Barnaby. I Barnaby. love. Barnaby. Are you calling Barnaby? You, I yeah. call him Barney. <laughs> What's his name? We're so close, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Barney. Yeah, he. Barney, big fan of yours so i this is the weird thing like okay so you're unknown in america of sorts yeah i'd say but completely. you have five million twitter followers i think it's 5.7 5. now 5.7 right? 5. million twitter followers and that's just in the uk a country of 60 million or probably you have some australian folk and probably are you big in india uh, i don't know yeah maybe yeah, probably yeah, probably big yeah probably. Sort of in, in the in the commonwealth <laughs> Pretty big. <laughs> any any place that the, U, the the British took over, any place where the empire really, like the, the dark side did. They like to hear this voice. They like to hear this voice them. because it, it sounds like you're it's knowledgeable. Cathartic. Yeah. Like you can bark orders. Yeah. But the most South Africans must love you. Oh, they love this. They yeah. Love this Half the South Africans. Half, Half, Half the Half. South Africans are big fans of yours. Um, so, so we got Jack Whitehall here. We don't have any writers uh, with us today. Uh, it was an interesting episode. I got, I got through it pretty quick. That's how I judge an episode. How fast do I do the read? Yeah, you killed that Act Three. Act Three, man! I religion. Fucking, I, re, I, did, yeah. I I know how to talk about religion. I did Act Three in in maybe one take. Um, and I did Act Two. We did an Act Two where I interviewed Mark Cuban. I was in Dallas and I interviewed Mark Cuban. I looked super fucking wasted in the interview, but I was just tired. And um, your fly was down. And yeah. I did a great take. And then Wardrobe came up to me and said your fly was down the whole time. So I had to do that all over again. <laughs> so there's the there's the flyed take and the unflyed take. Um, so in in today's show, what did we start off talking about? We talked about first things. it was yeah. Uh, the episode was called Ah. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. And we kind of went back and rehashed some things that people are forgetting about because all everyone thinks about is imminent doom with Trump. So 
we talked about some other things where it's kind of doomed, but that we kind of forget about because every day something crazier things happen. So the first thing was Hurricane Maria and, and Puerto Rico, and basically they don't have any power still. Yeah, it turns out in Puerto Rico they don't have any power anymore, and people have stopped talking about that in the news. And they used to talk about it a lot when it was happening. Well, not a lot. It never got the coverage that the Hurricane Harvey got. Mm. Um, well, I'm talking obviously about Harvey Houston, Weinstein. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, in, yeah. in Houston, Hurricane Harvey, and then what was the one that hit Florida? What was that called? Uh, Irma. Irma. Irma yeah. and Harvey got a lot more play than uh, Maria did. Um, you know, Maria sounds more foreign. The, that, well, the hurricane we had in Britain got no coverage, I imagine, ever here at all. Oh, yeah, no, it did got you, a little bit. Did you have bit. one in Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. had, like, a hurricane, like, Hamish or Fred or something. Yeah, it was something and very it pretty. It was the least impressive hurricane. No, no, no. Giles. Was, Giles, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. It was like, it was... Um, he went to Cambridge. He was disillusioned. Yeah. It was, didn't it start with an O, Oscar? An Oscar, yeah. Hurricane Oscar hurricane or something like that. Oscar. And it was, like, the remnants of, but it hit, like... the. It's the, the hurricane that apologized afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it, was the, it was the only hurricane that cleaned up after itself. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Excuse me. We pick up that car. Uh, yeah, but was there a lot of damage over there? Or was it? Like, I mean, literally no damage at all. Like what part of Britain like a did shed it, fell over? Ireland got hit. What part hardest, of Britain like, did it hit? Uh, it hit the south coast. It so hit, like Cornwall? Or yeah, it hit like Cornwall and Devon. Uh, but, but isn't it a lot of cliffs on the on the ocean there? There's yeah. the white cliffs. Of so that, that helps because the big problem here is when you're at low level of the ocean, the storm surge comes in and you're like six, seven feet underwater. What I was thinking about, if it was hitting like Ireland, they said I was going to, I was like, I just imagine cliffs and I'm like, yeah. all right, it's just a rough day. People, don't, people, people, people don't like know this, but I'm a little bit of a, I'm a little bit of a British file. Is that a term? I, 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 I relate to British people more than I do Australians or, or Americans. Yeah, you're getting more British right now. As you talk. I'm sorry, I've been drinking. No. Well, that's yeah. the drinking thing. That's... When I get drunk, I speak more British. And then when I'm in Australia, I get I Aussie up real yeah. fucking quick. Forrest did a tour of Australia with me, and I was like, fucking this and fucking that. And I was, yeah. I was all over it. I've, I've never had anything, I've, I've never had my voice slip into American yet. In fact, I did a movie where I had an American accent, and it's been uh, renownedly criticized as appalling. Oh, what movie? <laughs> what, what movie is that? We should all see it. What no, please. Oh, I, haven't oh, I think I know what it is. It was me, it was me Ken John. I can't John. remember the name of it. That's it was why. me, Ken John, and Reese Darby, and it was a film. Killing Hasselhoff. Killing David Hasselhoff. Oh, and yeah. It was about guys in a celebrity death pool, and I'm appalling in it. And I take full credit for being bad. Do you start you naked? American and then give up? Like half I, they, they, What this. happened was, because Reese Darby was in the movie, they said to me, oh, you, we can't have two accents because that would be crazy. <laughs> and so they, said, so they said, can you do an American accent? And I just went, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and of, of all the and people, then, the people they then, should ask, Reese would be, more, I feel like since he does so many characters, he'd be able to no, do it. Reece does, do it. Reece do it. No, Reese can't do it. No, Reese can't do it. If you don't remember, you don't know who Reese Darby is. Reese Darby played Jacko, our sports guy, in the last episode. Why do you do But why do people do that? Like, I, I do that if I'm asked whether I can do something. Any accent I'll say I can do. I said I could play guitar. I said I could play guitar. In a movie? I, yeah, Did you play I, guitar I, no, in a movie? I, I didn't get the fucking part because I went into audition and I got called up on the lie. I thought, I was like, I can play guitar like I've... I've held a guitar. Yeah, but was it, was, it, was it just that, or was the character also black, and you were just lying about everything? <laughs> no, it was Brian May. You wanted to play Brian May? <laughs> yeah. And I okay, for people who don't know, Brian May is the curly-headed <laughs> man from Queen. Yep. Um, one who, 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 one of the greatest guitarists ever. of all time. His his guitar was made from a fireplace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His dad made like his, his guitar. dad made his guitar from a fireplace. Like this is the stories of legend. And he doesn't use a pick. He uses, he uses a, a, a dime. A dime, like yeah. a coin. Yeah. As he as his thing. So you're you, just going to wing it? That's one of the well, great no, guitar players. I, like, I look quite like him, so I was like, "That's yeah. without the hair." Off. But they would have put a wig on. Yeah, put a wig on. We can get one of them. Yeah. And they said, "Can you play guitar?" And I was like, "Yeah." I mean, I've I've like you know picked up. A you know, a couple I've of never chords. ever played a guitar before in my life. But I was like. <laughs> I, let's just, just bang it against the show wall. them that I look a bit like him if I had a wig, and we'll see where it goes from there. I can't believe you used to have to audition, but the fact that you went, who was, <laughs> who was, who was playing Freddie Mercury, was it, or, or was it just the Brian May story? If it was just the Brian May story, I'm going to say you didn't miss out on much. <laughs> That's a direct to VHS. Yeah. <laughs> You've who, seen who, Freddie was, Mercury. who was playing Freddie Mercury? Rami Malek. 
It's Who's, the big film from from Brian Mr. Robot. Singer's doing it, yeah, Rami Malek from. I, Mr. Robot. Wasn't there wasn't there a time when Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen yeah. was going to play Freddie mm. Mercury, mm. but Sasha Baron Cohen said there wasn't enough dick sucking in the film for him to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, my guitar lies. It's actually less worst way to be dropped from that film. Um, so that's a new film then, because that's no, that's the film, the film that they're making now. Oh, okay, that's making what I mean. That's what I mean. It's like current. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Who did they cast as Brian May? Um, he's called Gwillem Lee. Or Gwillem. Ah, Gwillem. Gwillem. Hur- Hurricane Gwillem, as yeah, I call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gwillem. Yeah, Gwillem. <laughs> Gwillem couldn't have any other job besides being an actor. You can't go, oh, yeah, oh you just come on the construction site, just go speak to Gwillem, he'll give you a helmet. Uh, yeah, I got the plumbing all fixed by Gwillem. <laughs> it's leaking, that's weird. Yeah, oh, Gwillem. When will you get the ring from Mordor? Um, so anyway, so that's Jack. Being Brian May, and I did a bad movie. Well, we were, we're sh- talking about hurricanes. We're oh, we, uh, yeah, the, yeah, show, we the show started. We were talking about hurricanes and the problems with hurricanes. And, and it turns they- out, just a head note, hurricanes on the bad list. No good. No. <laughs> Pe- not good. People, we, we, people we, we, don't what? like them. You don't want to have a hurricane near you. Hurricanes are bad. People in construction like them. That's it. People so. in construction like them. Yeah, because afterwards they make a lot of money. I'm from, I live in Florida. I'm telling you, it's like a boon for them. That's I like, did. I did, we did a joke in this thing about how the like electricity is out in Puerto Rico. It's been six weeks. It's going to be another six weeks before most of the people get electricity. Only thirty percent of the island have electricity. And then I did a joke that was just more for me anyway. And I, I just said. Uh, so that smug cunt with the I didn't say cunt because it's no. coming central. I said that smug bastard with the Tesla isn't talking so much. And that's because I have a Tesla and Tesla owners quite may possibly be the smuggest fuckers on the mm. earth. Cuz it drives the, the car drives itself. It's expensive. You it's act like you're doing like you're saving cars. the earth. You act like it. No, it does self-driving. I just sit on the motorway. You just sit there and you do I went I went 80 miles to park San itself. Diego and I didn't touch the wheel. I just sat there. Well, you have to touch the you have to touch the wheel about every Sort of minute or so just to prove that you're still awake, right? Yeah. And so one time I was just sitting there, I was self driving, I was just sitting there and I was texting and or emailing on the screen or something. And and then it flashed and it said, Oh, please touch the wheel. And I thought to myself, What will happen if I just don't touch the wheel? And then it said it again, like, Please touch the wheel, like the car's getting angry at me. And I went, What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to think? And then, Please touch the wheel. Please. And then it just went, No, like they assumed I was asleep. Yeah. And the car just turned its hazard lights on and it just just came, to, just a came stop to a stop in the middle of the freeway. And then I touched the wheel and then the car, such a cunt, the car went to me, you don't get to do have self-driving for another five hours. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, like, like it told me off, like, you have to hold the wheel the entire <laughs> way home. <laughs> You know what's, if it's, only it's, there was something you had upon your anatomy that you could just droop over the wheel and then have your hands free well, for the whole... Yeah, I could, could I you? could, but I've lied about that in a lot of interviews as well. <laughs> um, I, I've said to women, I've got a big dick, and then I show up and they go, you're not Brian May. Um, you know what's weird? Speaking of, of Teslas and hurricanes, though, you know after the Hurricane Harvey hit, that Tesla sent like a patch to all the people that had uh, the cars where it would extend the battery life so that they could go longer because they didn't have electricity and stuff like Why that. Why don't they just give me the patch? That's what I'm saying. Like, well, that's like a conspiracy theory thing. Like, If that exists already, why are they not giving it to you? Do you want to know why? Because Elon Musk is a South African, and we all know how I feel about those people. They're evil. Okay. All okay. Right. So, so, the, so the, end of that, the end of that piece, though, I think we should mention, though, was, uh, was the we, we went back to the basically the shooting. So we went back to the shooting because uh, originally we wrote uh, the piece about four days ago about how people forget about the news so quickly and the Las Vegas shooting was over a month ago now and people have really just stopped talking about it. And then on Sunday, obviously I'm sitting at home and I'm trying to sort of practice the piece that we're going to do and then the the shooting in Texas happens where I think it was 26 people. 26 people killed over 20 26 injured. people got killed by and it's a, a town guy. Of- Town of 646. So yeah, it's like, so everybody knows everybody. Yeah. A town of 646. And so we took the avenue on this piece, and we'll probably get probably get a lot of flack for this, but but uh, I said a joke where I said, uh, I said, we record this show six hours before it airs, and so I'd like to give my thoughts and prayers to the people who were shot in the massacre this afternoon. 
you know, because yeah. that's how I'm saying yeah. to feel about the whole thing. I can't do every episode, every week I can't talk about the new gun shooting tragedy. It's, it's so sad that we actually have to brush by these things. Um, well, here's but, the thing, though, is... Mass shooting is defined as if there's an incident where four or more people are shot. They don't have to be killed, but four or more people are shot, like wounded or killed. And we average one per day. So I know in our or opening... in Texas, they call it Thanksgiving. No, here's the thing. Hey in our opening graphics, we had a day since mass shooting, 30 to zero. But technically, there was a mass shooting on November 3rd, the day before, in Austin, Texas. Four people were shot. Yeah. And there was three or four that day, too. So they happen. It's one per day in the United yeah, States. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. And for yeah. people to just keep on going on that it's a mental health issue, and that it doesn't happen in Britain. It doesn't happen in Australia. It doesn't happen anywhere. This is the only place it happens. And if you want to be stupid enough to say that, oh, more guns would make it better. So this happened in Texas. This happened in Texas where there's people in that church who were open carrying um, there was, without a doubt, there were six guns in that fucking room, and they didn't do jack shit. It's a, it's a load of rubbish. America, sort yourself out. Um, I like the argument too that they're like the, the the guy that actually came there with a gun and scared him off and shot him. They're saying he's a hero, which although he did save lives by coming there, they're saying like, see, a gun can save lives, but it's it it misses the whole argument that. With no guns, you wouldn't have to come there with a gun to say. Yeah, it's like, and, all, and, all, and also, <laughs> how late did it save the lives, and how much? Yeah. It just it just doesn't happen in other countries. Destroyed you, a whole town. You can yeah. argue all you want about blah 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 blah. Most of the gun deaths are suicides or whatever. But it, it look, if if you think that there isn't a problem in America, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. How do you approach it though now, like as a, me, as a host of a thing? I mean, I, I, I tell you, I tell you what, this is, this is about yeah, I, I've do become you feel a, a duty. And I, like... I do feel like I'm the gun guy, but I will tell you what, being British, when I was being Australian, but when I was touring the UK, which I will be doing again in January. Um, so when I was touring the UK, I did notice that when you're in bars and you were drinking, everyone's a little bit more punchy. Yeah. I got like a couple of fist fights in yeah, the UK. Yeah, yeah. And you don't get in fist fights in America because you might get shot. Yes. So so it does help in a little way. Yeah. You get less broken noses, but you, you get a, a longer life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can see that. But you like 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 the, the term, take you to some the term to own. glass someone would never no one's ever smashed a bottle into someone's head in America because I'm sure it's happened and someone's going to write to me going well actually my friend has a bu -bu -bu -bu. but it's it's a different like Britain's very fighty yeah very fighty very fighty very fighty people don't like you and you know as a celebrity that when you get slightly famous in Britain people want to take you down a peg so it gets even more fighty the more well known you get that's yep. a, that's what I experienced yep. anyway. And uh, but America isn't as fighty; it's more right. shooty. I my only fighty in the UK was outside the Manchester Comedy Store, right? And a man came up to me, and because to be fair, well, not to be fair, I was drinking a Smirnoff Ice. Um, uh, yes, which drink. is an Alki Pop. Uh, like, Alky do they call them Alki Pops over here? No, it's like it's, a sweet. Like I know, I know what a Smirnoff Ice. Like, 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 no, I know what it is. It's yeah, like a mixture. It's, like, it's like an alcohol it's like a lemonade. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He was drinking an Alki Pop, and a guy came up to me and and called me a faggot so I called out his bluff and kissed him on the lips and he smacked me in the face and broke my nose <laughs> and was, broke your nose yeah broke my nose and chipped my tooth which I still have chipped to this day and that was the only time I've ever been in a yes, fight which is yes. not really a fight cause it's yes really a, it was his no fist that broke your tooth <laughs> <laughs> it was more making out than anything else I, I like that you guys call them fighties too it doesn't even sound that bad no, like, oh, no it gets yeah. a little bit not, not the fights are fighty oh I thought the, you were saying we're getting fighties the, no the area is a bit fighty uh, like, like fight, even still a, that's yeah. cute a fight could break it's out. Adorable. It's adorable. This, like, this it area like... is a little fighty. Yeah. yeah. My <laughs> area though is not very fighty. Not as fighty where I live in London. It's quite like no. It's it's, it's it's I had... it's quite walky. Quite walky. <laughs> <laughs> walky talky. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Li little chatty. Yeah. <laughs> little chatty. I saw two posh guys once square up to each other outside a pub near to where I live and heard the best thing that's ever been shouted in a fight, which was, "Go on, Monty. He's dishonoured you." <laughs> to have a fight. That was real, was huh? Exceptional. That's hilarious. Exceptional. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you a great fight, fighty story. When I, I I bigged that up too much. But anyway, when I first moved to America, I was living in Venice uh, with another comedian who gave me a, a room in his house, and um, and so we were living in like these alleyways in Venice. Um, where it's just a lot of homeless people in Venice, yeah, yeah. California. A lot of homeless people, and. I started hearing a fight, 
right? And it was basically, it was like two guys in wheelchairs got on either end of this aisle and they wheeled towards each other, oh yelling God. shit out. They had the typical, it's always weird when you see a homeless person with an American flag out the back. Like you're dealing with a country with no health care yeah, and you're still yeah. super proud. <laughs> we don't care about <laughs> you. <laughs> you're like, we don't care about you. We're not taking care of you, but you're still like, this is the best country in the world. No. I'm homeless. I'm a right? veteran too. It's like, oh, Graham, we're taking yeah, yeah. care of you. Yeah, so there's two, like, they look like, like Vietnam vets or something, but I don't know how old they were, but they were covered in dirt and grub. Anyway, so they, they, they started yelling at each other at the end of the alleyway. And I just stuck my head out the window like, oh, this will be worth a watch, <laughs> right? Right, and so they wheel up to each other, and then they start punching each other, and then they end on the floor like wrestling and rolling around. I watched it, and then it just ended, and I went, "Oh, well, that was that passed a few minutes of me day," <laughs> and I went back to watching TV, and then they start doing the exact same fucking fight again. They're yelling the same fucking words. I, I look at me, and they're rolling around the ground, and I stick my head out the window, and I go, "Oi, you two!" Fucking sort yourselves out! <laughs> and then, the, and then the director at the end of the aisleway goes, "Cut." <laughs> 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 And I was like, sorry, everyone, sorry. I'm Enjoy making your movie. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that was a fun story. Um, so so we did the whole thing about news. With, we, and we the had, shooting. The we shooting. had Mark Cuban on. And then we had Mark Cuban. Now, that was I, fun. I flew out to see Mark Cuban in Dallas. Um, yeah, with your flies do you know on, Mark? Do you know Mark Cuban in, in America? No, I don't know Mark Cuban. Mark, he own, he Mark own. Cuban owns the Dallas Mavericks. He's a billionaire. Basketball he's on, team, yeah. He's on Shark Tank, yep. which is the equivalent of Dragon's Den. Now, yep. I, there was a thing actually in the interview when I asked him because every time you watch Shark Tank, they go, hey, this is the American dream working in action. It's so great. Entrepreneurs can come onto the show. This is the American dream. And then I said to them, I said, it's not the American dream. That show comes from Sh Dragon's Den. And Dragon's, yeah. Dragon's Den's a British show, right? And I really laid down the law. And he goes, well, actually, Dragon's Den is owned by Endemol, which is a Dutch company. And the first original show is they bought it off the Japanese, and then eventually it became. A... <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, so why is it the American dream? And he goes, because we're in America. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I already liked Mark Cuban, but even after watching the interview, I feel like I liked him more. Like he seems like he's pretty. Man, loved, but, yeah. he was. Uh, look, if if even if he's Republican or Democrat, if he runs for president, man, I just fucking like the company. What's that single he, payer healthcare? He's from board of that. Well, what, he, what he means, said, what he said about healthcare was he said something to me about healthcare that wasn't in the interview that that we aired that was edited out that I actually got on board with. Now I understand that America is such a large country that it is difficult. Because everyone's taxes will rise so high. If we have socialized medical care, it will affect a lot of people and blah, blah, blah. And people like their own doctor. And, all, and they're just not used to it. So it's hard to bring into action. And he said the one thing that a non... Because I'm, I'm a socialist when it comes to medical coverage. He said the one thing to me that I actually said, or right, I could deal with that. And he said what we do is, he goes, he goes when a student takes a loan, the government backs it. That you could take for fucking ever to pay it off, right? He goes, you do the same thing with healthcare. What happens is because we have Medicaid when you turn, what is it, 65? Yeah. When you turn 65, they have socialized healthcare in America. And he goes, he goes but before that, if you get cancer and that cancer costs you $800,000, you get put on a, the government backs the bill. And then you get put on a payment payment plan, and then if you fucking die, you don't have to pay it off, yeah. right? So we're just covering the people who have the big diseases, and then everyone can cover themselves the smaller things. And I think I could get on board with that yeah. because the the problem with medical care in this country is people are just eking out an existence. They're struggling like most people are, and then what happens is someone gets cancer, and then they're fucked for the rest of their lives. Yeah, it or would they die. It would be all right if you were just fucked and you just had a I have to pay fifty dollars a week. Yeah, yeah. That's the number one thing that kills people that have cancer is not being able to afford the treatment, not the cancer. Well, I mean, it is the cancer eventually, but it's not being able to get the treatment. By the way, it's Medicare, not Medicaid, if anyone's going to write in like oh. some asshole. It's still, there is Medicaid too, but All I know right. some, some dickhead will be like, it's Medicaid. I gotta, like, you I know got, what we were talking gotta, about. We said 65. I got to tell you something funny, right? So what happened with uh, Mark Cuban was I asked him a question. I said, if I gave you $500, how quickly could you turn it into $520? And he goes, really quickly. And I go, how? And he goes, I'd just give you 20 bucks, man. I wouldn't waste my time. Yeah. 
And then I said, can I have 20 bucks? And this is in the interview. And then he gave me $20 and I put it in my top pocket. And I, I had every intention to give the $20 back to yeah. Mark Cuban. And I just forgot about it. And so I still have $20 from Mark Cuban. Now, as, we, as the, the field piece was showing in the studio, yeah. I, the, my dialogue at the end was going to be like, and I, nev- I never gave him the $20 back. And I was going to pull a 20 out. And I reached my pocket. I didn't have a 20. I do have the Mark Cuban 20 at home. Yeah. And so I, I turned to my manager, Alex Murray, and I said, Alex, I said, can you give me 20 bucks really quickly? I've got to do this thing. And then um, I, I did the whole thing. And I haven't given Alex his 20 back either. <laughs> This should be a new thing you do. It's it's small. I'm up 40 bucks. Are you going to mail it back to Mark Cuban? No, I'm, I'm no, keeping that, man. I if, feel like if, I feel if he ever, it's if he ever becomes president, yeah. I got twenty dollars yeah. from the president, man. I'm yeah. filming it. Here's some other things he does. That's like pretty. Like he makes anonymous donations only. He also started like the uh, founded the Fallen Patriot Fund to help U.S. military personnel killed or injured. He's raised five million dollars in grants for that. He's like. He seems like a good person. No, like, he, it's he, like, he's a great guy. Look, this, he loaned, he loaned he's, he's it. Run, this is my personal. This is my personal opinion on Mark Cuban. He will not. This is, and, and like I might be wrong, but he has young children. Um, he said to me something, and I sort of know this as well with work and everything. The most valuable. I've made money doing stand up and the TV show and everything. My most valuable thing now is time. And you can't buy time. So it's like someone will offer you a whole heap of money to do a show or something, but sometimes your time is more valuable. Now, what he said to me was that the most valuable thing he has now is time. And I feel like he spent a lot of time building this empire, becoming worth, he's like worth $5 billion. $3.3 billion. Oh, yeah, well, poor cunt. Still, minus $20. Right. Yeah. 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 Minus $3.28. Right, right. So, so the whole thing about him is he spent all this time. Now, I, th- I don't know the age of his children, but I feel like they're in their early teens or... or not, it doesn't say everybody's got two daughters and a son. He's, got, he's so. got two daughters, right? I feel like he won't be ready to run for president in 2020 because he, he's waiting for his kids... To finish high school. So I, I would say a 2028 is when Mark Cuban is going to run. Yeah. But the next one's the one to do, isn't it? Like, following this shit. Well... It's going to be... Yeah. I would just want our first Asian president. You yeah. know, we've done everything else. We've got the orange one, the black one. <laughs> well, there's wanna... not been a woman yet. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, that's, Asian that's, woman. Uh, that's never gonna no, happen. Yeah. <laughs> We've done that. It's We're not, so all far it's from it. Up to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one other thing he did that was really cool was his, he has a player on the Dallas Mavericks, uh, JJ Barea, who's a guard, and he's from Puerto Rico, and so he loaned the team plane for him to bring forty thousand pounds of supplies to Puerto Rico. So it's like every, it's like yeah. Look, 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 I'll tell you, just yeah. from meeting him for a short time, he is a decent human being. Um, and he made his money off computers or whatever, but you know, I, I just and I, I, we've interviewed a lot of people on the show, and I, I've got to tell you, I think Mark Cuban is like, look, if if we find out like in one week that he's Weinsteining the fuck out of the, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll go, oh, wow, Mark, Mark got me by surprise. <laughs> Yeah. But I gotta tell you, Mark Cuban is a is a is a good person. We like um all right. And also the Weinstein thing may not ha- hold him back in the current climate. No I mean you know No, no, probably not. Didn't hold it, Trump back. Yeah, you know, it didn't it didn't hold he can he'd still be president <laughs> still and right. president <laughs> do that shit. So yeah. so then the next act was uh, about religious freedom and the, all the religious freedoms that uh, if, if if you can do anything in, in like but you can claim religious freedom so you can hate gay people and not serve cakes to gay people if you claim it's against my religion and we so we did a whole piece about not that. provide insurance for a contraception uh, yeah you uh, could you could have like and... so under Obamacare what what happened before was Obamacare covered. For your employees, you had to give them contraception if they didn't yeah. want to get knocked up. So now you can have a religious boss who says, I don't believe in contraception and deny women in your company getting contraception. So it's like, it's fucking mental. Um, so what happened there was we talked about religious freedom. We did a funny joke at the beginning about like how you can choose to be, you can choose your religion, but you can't choose to be gay or trans or have a uterus. And then I said, I've tried to have a uterus, blah, blah, blah. Now we didn't have a tag for this joke until this morning. And it was like, also I tried to be gay this morning. Uh, I got pretty close. And then I added a tag on in the studio audience where I went, I fucked the guy. (laughs) 
<laughs> Did you add that from this morning or just in the audience, right? In the audience. Yeah, because I don't remember in the run. I, had, I like added that. that in the audience. I went, oh, fuck the guy. Anyway, we didn't take a second take, so that's in the show. Well, you know, that's always my go-to tag. That's so it's like that's that's I, that's how you it's did. Classic. You kissed the guy in the mouth and yeah, got punched I mean, in the face. So. I fucked a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I tag every joke with that. Jack, 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 Jack. Sorry. No, not not your Jack. My assistant Jack. Oh, Everyone knows Jack. Jack, um, can you get us all alcoholic beverages, please? Can you get me? I'll have a tequila and Red Bull. What would you like first? Let's get a beer out of here. A beer yeah. out of there. What would you like, Jack? Walker? I've never had a tequila and Red Bull before, but I. All right. think that that I tell you what, get idea. two of the fancy tequilas on the ice. I have like a seven hundred dollar bottle of tequila in my office. That was a gift. Wow. Drink it on ice, like we're old gents. Yeah, yeah. Right? Do you want to smoke as well? <laughs> Why are you whispering? I don't You're know. On a podcast. Just <laughs> on the mic. I don't. I, I don't want. Every, I don't want everyone on the podcast to hear what me, me and Whitehall are up to. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. So that was. What are we up to time wise in the podcast? I don't know. 30. 30. 30. Oh, we're crushing it. We're crushing, yeah. it. crushing it. But um, that was. You were like really in the wheelhouse. Like anytime you talk about religion, because that's like your. That's your base. That's, that's where my, you started. You know? <laughs> that's my base. That is, I say this, this, my... this plays to your base of fans. Because sometimes as you've grown, like as a comic, like you, and you've had a kid and you've progressed and your comedy has changed, there's always people who are like, man, man he doesn't talk about that, coke that was, anymore. That was the thing. But this, is like there was a review of one of my shows recently um, where people get so upset with me because they feel like I'm not just fucking prostitutes and doing coke all the time. I am, but I don't talk about it anymore, right? So, so people people get upset because I'm not talking about that as much as I used to. And then, like, uh, someone wrote a review of one of my shows where they went, "He's gotten too preachy. Fuck him. I'm not going to see that guy." And then, like, someone wrote a re- review underwards went, "No, no. I just went and saw him. He did 30 minutes on docking." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which I do. I, at the moment in my my current set, I do maybe twi- maybe twenty minutes. Yeah, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. Docking. But a good you know what docking, docking, docking is? Chunk. Do I know what docking is? <laughs> yeah, come on. Of course, I know what docking is. Um, I I this twenty minutes I want to see. I mean, that's what it's I'm a going it's to a Phoenix it's celebrity a, theater for alone. It's a it's a lot of docking. Do you want to do a set tonight? We can go do a set tonight on docking. Yeah, we'll do a docking set. We docked. Pick, pick pick a comedy club. We'll go do a comedy club together. He's got to fly you out. Have to do t- twenty minutes. On docking, yeah. I I can do thirty if yeah. I can extend it. I'll just speak slower. You could start with frottaging and then move His on. Next to special. Whoa, whoa, what's Where? what's frottaging? Frottaging. Frottaging. It's simply just the the rubbing of tips, and then docking is tips oh, of the penis. Oh, I just call that rub, wait, wait, wait. rubby dick tip. <laughs> But wait, what's it called? Frottaging. Frottaging. Frottaging is it rubbing so of the tip of the dicks uh, to frottage. It sounds like such a <laughs> sounds nice like a, a nice thing meal. Yeah. yeah. A frottage pie. Yeah. <laughs> now, so for some reason, this this third act was gay heavy, and we did a whole lot of stuff about how. And then there was a bit where I did a turn to the camera. Now they're editing the show as we speak, so I don't know how much of this got in. But we turned, and I did a bit about how um, gays can do anything in in the modern era, except for accidentally get pregnant. <laughs> right? They can't accidentally get pregnant. That's yeah, the one yes. thing we'll say they can't do yeah. that. Right? And so then I went on a rampage about how rampage. <laughs> Jesus. rampage. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I went on a rant Killed about about idiots. how. Could a gay person accidentally get pregnant about a guy walking down stairs holding a cup of cum? Now, that wasn't in the teleprompt, and we did two <laughs> versions of that. Um, the first version of it was about seven minutes long. Now, the show's only 22 minutes long, so Scott, our producer... Seven. It wasn't seven minutes. It was about... It was very long. It was almost two minutes in a six-minute piece or something. All right, all right, all right. right. Whitehall, Whitehall. Taste this. Taste Is this. there Red Bull in that? No, no, no. no. Just, just sip this. Just sip this, just my give friend. It just sip this. Drinking tequila. That's very important. Whisper, oh, whisper, guys. Yes. Keep it down. Oh, Keep your voices yeah. down. Yeah. Look at that. It's not a shot, is it? Oh, Keep your voices that's down. That's meant to be enjoyed. Like Too back. loud. Oh, it's meant yes. to be enjoyed. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh Jack. That should that just be a podcast really where you just hear oh, the ice clinking of a drink. <laughs> it's it's kind of soothing. It's good, it's right? It's so good. That's good. This is like also like bringing, like it's flooding back memories and like it's, drinking tequila with you. It's, and it's, you're giving me that look, and I know how it's this a, ends. But it's, it's a, it's, this is a numbered bottle. This is like they've only made so much of it. This is like a special. It's like I'm, but I am feeling like I'm 17 again. Drinking how did tequila it end when you were 17? You're not 17 ends with again us, like, because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck are you? I went. I, I went. I went I'll tell a story about Jack White. No, no, no. When, no, no, no. This is about you. This is about how much. 
much of a shit I am. Okay. Um, when, when Jack was very young and he, he came to a couple of my shows at Edinburgh and Jack was a very promising comedian. I was on the way down in my career. And and we were, we were drinking. We got blind drunk together. Maybe you were 19 at this stage. We got blind fucking drunk together. And there was a female comedian. I won't say the name of the female comedian because she's still angry about it. But the next day, um, and she was a friend of mine, she she wouldn't speak to me. And I was like, what? I was hanging out with you and your brother, yeah, yeah. right? And she wouldn't speak to me. And then, like, she wouldn't speak to me the next day and the next day. And then I actually called her up. And I said, are you angry with me? And she goes, the things you said to me in front of Jack Whitehall and his little friends were the most offensive things I've ever heard in my entire life. And I went, what did I say? And she goes, you know what you said. And I, to this day, I have no idea. No idea. I've apologized profusely, but allegedly I was trying to entertain you and your brother by saying horrible things to women. And so I'm sorry if you're listening and you know who you are. She, you're still not friends with her? Or she still hasn't forgiven you? Um, she has forgiven me. It took a long time. Uh, it took a long, she actually came to the show the other day when she was in LA. And then she. Oh, the taping? Yeah, you know uh, who it was. And she actually said to me. <laughs> I'll write it down. Write it down and then send it to me. Yeah, and then, yeah. and uh, so you're good then. You guys are cool. Did she, I, did she at least tell you the offensive things? No, I know. still to this day. <laughs> It'd be interesting to know I what the most. I still to this is. day don't know what I've said. Maybe it's I, a really long play, yeah, like I've, prank. Yeah. Like like twenty years from now, she's gonna be like, "You didn't say anything." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck. <laughs> Uh, Scott, Scott Zabinski's just come in. Do you want to join on the microphone for a bit? Scott, come and join Scott. us. Scott, um... His last name is not Zabinski. It's very close to that. What is it? He's just been pleading with the very, editor. Too, right? Scott's our showrunner yeah. to the show. He's, he, he's been Scott, pleading with the editor Scott's to hack down that Scott's seven minute rant. Scott's the second most important person on the show, next to Forrest. <laughs> I thought Jack was higher than me. No. Anyway, so Scott, have you no, met, have Jack, you met Jack, Jack Whitehall? He you met Jack confused. Whitehall? Yeah, we met earlier. Nice Whitehall. young man. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Scott, I was just talking about the bit where I just went on a rant about how pregnant, how gay people could get accidentally pregnant, and now it's up to your edit. What edit have you chosen? Are you keeping this in or are you cutting it out? Uh, we haven't decided yet, but I think what we're going to do is we'll take the first take because I think that was the funny one. I don't think you could be just that get rid just... of Mark Cuban. Just get rid of him. We don't need. Him. <laughs> we don't even put him in another episode. Yeah, we got Problem $20. solved. We don't need him anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, I was just saying, I I took twenty dollars from Alex Murray for the sketch. I kept his twenty as just well. See, just see how many times you can pull this. <laughs> So, Alex Murray, if you're listening, and I'm sure you're not because you don't take a proactive uh, vision of my career. <laughs> no, he's listening, he's listening to the Nerdist. No, he's, a, he's actually the best manager in the world. But he, he, he takes care of me. Like, Alex Murray takes care of me. Uh, Chris Hardwick, who earns more money than me because of his 17 television shows, mm. and Jim Gaffigan and Nicky Glazier. And I feel like... I'm I'm not the lowest on his list, but I just what I need is I need for Jim Gaffigan to rape a few people so I can move up on the ranks. So Jim, I know we're friends, but if you're listening, do that for me. I don't think that would help your career. You're not going to fill the a niche that he had. Oh, this is a comedy show for fuck's sake, Forrest. I'm yeah, I know. I was, I was giving. Okay, you know what? All right, I so tried to throw you softballs. You know when you let was me. Was that do too it. bad? Should we edit that out? Well, uh, don't worry. May, the lawyers, may, the may, lawyers will let us. May I say that Jim? <laughs> may I say that Jim Gaffigan is one of the nicest men I've ever met, and he doesn't rape mm. anyone. Beep. Caveat. Well said. Um, Just keep that bit in without the bit before. Yes. <laughs> that would be a really nice end to the show as a non sequitur. <laughs> Just Jim's thought for the day. <laughs> Jim what, Gaffigan is a lovely chap. He's day. never raped. Thought for the day. People I don't think rape. <laughs> so. I tell you what, I did an interview with Larry King last week. And he just, Larry King, because he's old as balls, because he literally looks like balls. He was very nice. You know Larry King, yeah, is, yeah, right? Yeah. Larry King, he just sort of speaks like this. And then he just was reading off a teleprompt the whole time. And he was just like this. So, Jim Jeffries, you're an atheist. Do you think atheism can go too far? And I started stuttering on in the interview, like, I, 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 I thought he was going to do, so you studied musical theater in college, which is a question that I always have an answer for. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then he just goes like this. He goes, so, I don't know if this is in the interview because the interview is coming out in a few days, but he goes, so, Harvey Weinstein, 
He goes, do you think all those women are being honest? And I'm like, I, oh, yeah, well, you know, with his smoke, there's fire. He goes, I feel like we've gotten to a stage where you can't even order, you can't even invite a subordinate to lunch. Right, so I don't know if Larry King's all for rape, right? but he's like, he's, <laughs> oh my God. he's not, he's not happy about the whole thing. So I just went, and then I was like, "Fuck me!" Right, and I, I just said, and I said one thing in the in the interview, which I may be getting condemned for now because it's airing. I said, I said, well, I don't have that many subordinates, and I've looked at all of your subordinates, and I don't want to take any of them to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Now I didn't. May I say that I I wasn't saying that that his subordinates were unattractive. It was just, it, most of his subordinates are men, and there was one woman who was extraordinarily unattractive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I got um, I was a on a red carpet on Friday, and uh, I was walking down it and the, having to do a bit of stuff with the press, and one of them went, um, "Yeah, uh, Harvey Weinstein said about you that you were going to be the next big thing. How do you feel about that quote now?" And I was like, well, I wouldn't and, put and, it on a poster. And, and, Jack, <laughs> and Jack's <laughs> answer was, I swallowed way too much cum. <laughs> By the I way, really did Harvey Weinstein say you were going to be the next big thing? Yeah, next big thing? yeah. yeah I, I've, Man, I've you met must him be, in a hotel. You met him in a hotel? Yeah, did you ask go to his room? No, I met no. him in the lobby. And so why did he think you were going to be the next big thing? Like, what movie did you do? Because no, I, I didn't I, do a I, movie. I was, I just, I'd, I'd met he him. just met you? Yeah, he's fucking terrified. Because the things that people don't know about Forrest are, are this, that he's actually the thinnest um, eight-foot-tall person on earth. He just looks short from a distance. And <laughs> Eight-foot-tall is what you're going to go with? <laughs> um, but anyway, so Forrest, you have a passion. Tell us about your passion, Forrest. What's my passion? You like rom coms. Oh, no, chick, chick flicks. Romantic comedy. No, 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 chick flicks. They're chick different, flicks. They're chick different flicks than romantic are... comedies. They're not. They're, they're different than romantic comedies. A chick flick is different to a rom com. Because, because so a rom com. It could be like, you know, all the gals on a, on a trip. Okay, a, a chick flick could be a rom com, but a rom com isn't always necessarily a chick flick. It's like. The thing is, is chick flicks are generally. That the humor isn't like the driving force of the movie, you know. Like, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Steel Magnolias, classic chick flick. Mm. Great, great cast, good acting. But and there is some comedy in it, but it's more about like the relationships that the women have with each other and then the so, emotion of it. Yeah. So, so it's just so has you to like be women and and emotions. He likes so, emotion. Now, so, now Forrest, Sophie's choice. Forrest grew sure. up. Forrest, yeah. Forrest yeah. is the only yeah. child of a single parent um, of Mom. his mother. He loves his mother to bits. Yeah. Did, did some of this come from your mother? No. You know what it is. You know what I think I discovered was like I guess I. I would start crying at like certain things. I don't because I'm not a very emotional person at all. Even when I get happy or sad, or I don't show it a lot. So when I'm alone, I become more emotional. And then I think like some, to feel some emotion, I watch movies where there's emotional things that are going to happen when, in the script. When and you, then, I, when yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And when then you I, yeah. do this, do you put your cock and balls between your legs and stand in front of a mirror and go, "I'm a lady, I'm a lady." I'm not against I'm doing that. that. No. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you on that. You and cry? I, what, I cry. Yeah, and not not in real life, but then when I watch a film, I'm like a heavily oh hormonal pregnant woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh, me too. Get I some will, ice cream. Oh, ice cream. Yeah, yeah. I will that's go. why I'm so fat. But Chick I will cry at TV as well. I cry at Deal or No Deal because the woman was going on holiday. Look, I stop. Stop before I stop. Last movie you cried at. This oh can be God. a sensitive podcast. Jack, what's the last movie you cried at? The last movie that I cried at. Um, Look, the deal is you can only cry at the Shawshank Redemption, and that's it. Inside There's no out. other movies. Inside Out. Oh, Inside Out. Come was on, very, yeah, come it was very on. Sad. Inside Out. Oh, yeah. Up. Yeah, of course. Up, These fuck are all up. cartoon. No, yeah. what are you up, talking about? Fuck up, Jim. It's fuck up. It's <laughs> fuck <laughs> up. Oh. He's old. Get over it. Your wife's dead. Enjoy yourself. Get a hooker. Stop tying fucking no, balloons to your it house. Was. It's really sad. But I tell you, the bleakest moment of my life was when I stayed in the Disney hotel and I had a towel that had the old guy from Up embroidered onto it because they have all <laughs> the characters from Disney films on the towels. And I dried my testicles on the face of the old man from Up and saw his grieving <laughs> eyes looking up at me as my balls went up and down, up and down on yeah, his side. There was side no cum face. involved. No, Jim. 
<laughs> there was no cum. There was Did you just... have a separate tile just for your testicles, or that was just the portion? I just chose okay. that portion. Yeah, so I, have a, I, have a friend, I have a friend who actually refuses to dry his balls with his other... He has a separate tile just for that. Cause he doesn't, tile. Yeah, because he doesn't want his balls touching the part that's touching the rest of his oh, body. Well, like a, I'm not a flannel, Laura. I, ha- I, I have two women for the same job. <laughs> no, but I might be okay with that, actually, with a separate towel for the balls and ass. Yeah. I think that's a good yeah. system, because sometimes you get out, and even no matter how good you've washed, when you wipe off your balls and your ass, it's still a little stinky, and then yeah. it gets on your towel, and then you put it on your face. Why are you washing what, yourself? That's what curtains are for. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, this has been a long fucking route to get to this. But, but I want to say real quick before you keep going, I'm actually, this is a good segue, I'm going, I have a podcast coming out, it's all it? about chick flicks, oh, no, and no, only, shipping. it's all about men. Jack, give me one more, give God me one more it. sippy tequila. It's all about men. Watching chick flicks and the podcast we got soon and all that everybody. Men yeah, watching chick flicks. That's so about, yeah. Just bring the bottle, Jack. Just bring the bottle. Jack Hackett, we're talking to, not the, Jack White. So the fancy ones out. Yeah. Suck a dick, Jack. Uh, How did you let this happen? <laughs> He's. I'm gonna, uh, all right. I thought I had money in my pocket. Just get me. You have twenty dollars. Twenty dollars in one pocket. That's a good bottle of tequila for twenty dollars. This You've is an Alex Murray twenty. Forty dollars of other people's just money. Just get me. To get just get me. What 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 mix do you want? What mix do you want? I'm. Um, I'll. Uh, you know. I'm. I'm get easy. A couple of couple of vodka Red Bulls for me and me and Jack Whitehall, so we can stay up all night. <laughs> dance, dance, dance the night away until he kisses me and chips a tooth. <laughs> No, no, let him, let him finish like his other one. Get a tooth on the kiss. I was so we, uh, I wasn't a passionate So anyway, so my point, is, my point so is, my point is, my point is, my, 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 no, my friend, oh, my friend Jack Whitehall, I'm sitting in a hotel, I'm probably masturbating, I watched the movie, and then I was like, this movie sucks dogs' <laughs> dicks, and the movie was called Mother's Day, and the movie had, like, big stars in it. It's an ensemble Ju- movie, right? It's, it's like, an ensemble, yeah. it's a chick flick. Yeah, yeah. Julia Roberts. And other stars. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking it up now. I forget who else is in it. But it's kind of like in the vein of New Year's Day. It's like it's and... like Love Actually. Yeah. It's cool. There's a lot say. of storylines. And then there was a person in it who was like a guy who denied having a baby and then he loved the baby in the end. And that was Mr. Jack Whitehall. <laughs> And I remember going, oh, thank God Jack's got a living because I thought you'd be homeless by now. <laughs> Fuck you. I, Who, who's in I the movie? That was in 2000. Comedian. You 2000. are a rude man. Oh, wait. That's a different Mother's Day. No, There's a that's lot of a them. different Mother's Day. That's the horror <laughs> film. Actually, quite well. It was yeah, Gary Day. Marshall's uh, last film. Yeah. I only know that because Jack's told me that. And, yeah. it was, um, and that's all I said. And I, 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 I got a great story. I got a great story. So, so <clears throat> I can't believe I'm being so egotistical. Uh, sorry, but so... So the girl who played Laverne and Laverne and Shirley was Gary Marshall's sister. Penny Marshall. Penny Penny Marshall. Marshall. Many years ago when I started like sort of getting a bit of a following in the UK, I went and did a comedy club and Penny Marshall came to see me three times. And she was just a fan and she said and she came out and she goes, I love the jokes and whatever. She did something in that voice. And and I love the show and everything's going great and all that sort of stuff. Then when we I was doing legit was which was watched by tens of people. Um, I had a I had a scene where I was sexually harassed, and this actually came from a real story in my life. Where I was sexually harassed by a um, an executive in the industry, right? And it doesn't just happen to women; it happens to men as well. And so I had this scene where I was about to get a development deal, and the executive said, um, "You can have a development deal, but first you have to lick my pussy." And then they said, "She said, lick my pussy over and over again." And my first choice was actually Penny Marshall because I said, Penny Marshall's a fan. Yeah. She can come along. We'll That's have right. La- yeah, I remember. We'll have Laverne from Laverne and Shirley, and she can say, lick my pussy over and over. And they go, we, we can't get her. She says she'll do another role, but she won't say, lick my pussy over and over again. Mm. And in the end, and thank fuck, this, this is how life works, man. Thank fuck this happens. We've got Carrie Fisher. Oh, my God. And, yeah, uh, it's and a great I, scene. And then she said, "Lick my pussy over and over again." And then I actually did do that. And that's the, that's the news. <laughs> that's the how news, she died. That's the that's the biggest edit of the, of the new Star Wars film. <laughs> here's who here's who was in Red Mother's Day. And, and the weird thing was, it was only a week ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dug her up. Here's who was in Mother's Day. Jen- Jennifer Aniston, Kate Hudson, Julia Roberts, Jason Sudeikis, Timothy Oliphant. Oh, Jennifer yeah. Aniston. Oh, oh like, Willy, Willy, woo I, I looked at some reverse. I looked up you, Jack, to find this out. You've been in a ton of stuff. 
Like somebody's, but you were in Frozen? I got cut from Frozen. I had one line. I was go through the troll in Frozen. Go through the troll. Oh, really? Yeah. You, were, you were cut from Frozen? Yes, my agent. When, when they cut you, did they actually say, let it go? No. <laughs> <laughs> we got new drinks. We got they, new drinks. They genuinely told me that my part had been reduced to a non-speaking role in an animation, which was the best how Hollywoodism you, how I have you, ever had. How are you cut to a, fucking, how you cut to a non-speaking I know, role? I Jim. It's bullshit. It's just the just, sound of you masturbating over a snowman. <laughs> right. Well, I was like, yeah. I could be the lamp in Aladdin for that part. It doesn't you just pointed the character. That's me. Yeah, that's me. I saw yeah. someone watching Mother's Day on a plane and genuinely, after the scene with me they turned it off and put on the in-flight map okay that's the no, I, i've worst i've had this one, one time my, my first uh, the hbo specials are always on flights right so maybe eight years or maybe six years ago uh, my hbo special was on delta and i was still seeing an economy because i couldn't afford to sit in first class yet like i'm still at that stage right and my special was airing on Delta, and there was I was walking back from the toilet, and there was a guy watching me, and I thought, this will be cool. I'll just put my face right near his yeah, fucking yeah. face and stare at him, and then he'll freak the fuck out. And the, I did that, and I stood there for maybe 10 seconds. He didn't turn, and then eventually he turned and just rolled his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, God. I had I was on a plane once and I settled in to watch Twelve Years a Slave and I was like, this Oh, were is you still... in Twelve Years a Slave? No, I was not in Twelve Years a Slave. Which one were you? But I was like, I. <laughs> he I was need... the eleventh year. <laughs> I need to watch this film because it's an important film for um, everyone to watch. And I started watching it and I looked up and Chiwetel Ejiofor was sat in front of me, like staring back at me. And I was like, I don't think I can watch this film now. Yeah. Because I. Who who is staring at you? The main guy from Twelve Years a Slave. And I was like, I can't. Brad Pitt. Watch... No, Chiwetel Ejiofor. And I was like, do, you, do you watch our show, Jack Whitehall? Well, not today. Do you, do you didn't even watch it live. Have you seen my show? Yeah, yeah, I watch it on Who's YouTube. my weatherman? Brad Pitt. Oh, all right, all right. I thought, yeah, yeah. I thought I'd catch you out. How now, do you we're, get Brad Pitt to be your weatherman? Because Brad Pitt's a fan of mine. It's insane. It's yeah, great. Wait, and I've do never... you have to eat his pussy? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm the reason no, the marriage broke up. Thing, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking care of Silo right now. <laughs> Is it Silo? I don't know. Shilo? Shilo? Yeah, I think it's Shilo. I'll be edited out. Right. Know, it's like, will it? That's all right. No one's going to be offended by that. I'll find out. Um, so to you know what? This is a good segue, though. Jack Whitehall has a special out right now on Netflix. This is very. This is how how long has the special been out? Oh, like a couple of weeks. Couple it, of weeks. It's called, it's called Kissy Kissy Not Gay. Kissy, That's not what it's called. Gay. It's called Jack Whitehall at Large. <laughs> it's Jack on Whitehall Netflix. At Large tag. And then I fucked the guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the. There uh, is Shiloh. By the way, here's the kids: Shiloh, Maddox. Vivian, yeah, I don't care for Maddox. Zahara, Paxton, and Knox, Leon. Leon. Oh, don't be mean. Don't be mean. We're trying to get our we we're, we're trying to get our weatherman to come back to do one more episode. But it's always very delicate. You just go, "Hey, Brad, how are you doing? You want to come and hang?" <laughs> <laughs> nah. He now, if you if, if you become a real movie star, we'll get you on the actual show, Jake. Yeah, thanks very much. That'd be really great. Yeah, well, if you get on Frozen too. Have you been the lead us. in a movie? Only in England. So it doesn't what count. was that movie? What was that movie? It was called Bad Teeth. Bad Education. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually called Bad Education. Really? I oh, know, but that's that's from your TV yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. It was movie he, he, he had a sitcom where he played a teacher, and then he had a movie that came because Jack's um, popular with and you elsewhere. Show, you had a show with your dad. Jack, Jack I'm going to ask you now on the air. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm back in January. We're doing specials. We're doing three shows at the Hammersmith Apollo. Will you open for me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming to one of the shows though. Do you want to come and do as five? A guest. Do you want to do five minutes? You I'll can come as a you. guest. Yeah, all right, fucking Fuck Jack yeah. Whitehall's opening. I once tried to get Jimmy Carr to Does that do mean that. I'm not opening now. No, he's going to do five. I Wait, thought you just like fair. fired me in front of us. <laughs> I'm just making your life now, more difficult. No, no, folks. Jack has to go after me. I'm not going. He's not going to go in front of me in England. Come on. <laughs> to be fair, is, is me opening? Is that going to put them in the right mood? No, no, for no, Jim no. It's not stand up. I just need you to open your asshole in the dressing room. Oh, what a callback to the first episode. Why would they not put them in the Right All right, so Act Four, <laughs> docking, keeping it moving along. Act Four, Act Four was we talked about Papa John's, and in Papa John's, what happened with Papa John's was Papa John's, um, Papa John. uh, Papa he, John. he, he spoke out 
against the kneeling in the NFL. He said, I don't believe this is right. Well, he said, no, he thought it was affecting their sales. He thought, okay, what happened was yeah. Papa John's was the official pizza of the NFL, and then the kneeling happened, and that was affecting his sales. And then what happened was he said, I don't agree with the kneeling, blah, 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 blah. And then the alt-right decided that the Nazis said, <laughs> the Nazis said that Papa John's is the pizza of the Nazis. Favorite pizza. All right. right. Oh. And they had like, what official was Official pizza. What was the name of the newspaper? Uh, the Daily Stormer. The Daily yeah. Stormer. It was like big when Charlottesville was happening. That was they. So were, the, uh, the Daily Stormer yeah, said yeah. that Papa John's <laughs> is our guy, and then Papa John's was like, "Fuck, I don't want to be attached to these people." So then he said, "I don't." I, I love this joke by the way. He goes, he goes, I he goes, I don't want racists buying my pizza. So he told. So, so the not racist people wouldn't buy his pizza because yeah. the racists were supporting him, and then the racists wouldn't buy his pizza. And we said the joke that was so now he's all he's got left are people who are racist but don't think they are, which is basically everyone. everyone. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I said that joke. I'm sure lots of Asian people can't understand it. Now. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's a joke. I sh- oh my no, I know. God. <laughs> no, I, I don't even understand it at first. Uh. I became an accidental I guess I'm face Asian. of um, the racist movement in America. In the you became right. the face. Donald of- Trump Jr. retweeted a tweet of me, a meme of me from that show I did, my sitcom Bad Education, mm. going shush, like shushing the class. Mm. Clearly had no idea the context of what this meme was or who the fuck I was, but he tweeted it. In a debate about Charlottesville, like shutting up. Were you Black holding a tiki matter. torch? Or? No, it was fucking there, just going shush. And then you all going... of a sudden, my Twitter went mad. It was like, oh my god, you're shushing Black Lives Matter. I was like, that is not what I was doing in the original. Yeah, of course thing. not. And but suddenly, that... I'm like the shusher of Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Please, can you tell them that <laughs> I'm going, 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 well, Everybody, I, I Jack, feel, is I not the shusher. I feel like it's really up to you to tell people you're not. It's really oh, yes. not me. Like... No, but you have a voice here. I, I was don't. once in Could a you situation. Just tell them that I'm not a racist. You put, you help Jim Gaffigan out. By I was once in a situation. This is a bit of a name drop. I was once in a situation where Russell Crowe got in trouble for throwing a girl out of his hotel room. I was in the hotel room. I'm not going to get into the weeds about this. I remember that. Right, story. but this is true. But Russell and, and Russell was 100 percent in the right. The girl was out of control. He physically removed her from the hotel room. And then afterwards, the next day, I ring up Russell, and he was talking about it, and I said, don't worry, Russ, I got your back. Don't worry about it. If the media comes to me, I'll tell them that you did the right thing. And he said to me, he goes, Jim, I don't need a renowned misogynist sticking up for me. So anyway, so Russell did nothing wrong. So but maybe I'm you're, not, you're not the guy. <laughs> yeah. You're the face. And theme. This is the whole End thing. This is, a, this is an hour-long podcast. We're blind right now. We are? This may be our best podcast. Oh, well, well, we're not you the know, judge of that, really. No, but so you know we'll what see. it is? You know what it is? Yeah. You know what it is? This is the thing, right? For the other episodes, we've had, like, uh, Riders and Scott on. Say hello, Scott. Hey, well, why are you doing that face, though, when you said that? <laughs> yeah, you made what a really bad is, face towards what it. What I'm <laughs> saying is we've had other unfamous people. <laughs> and then me and Jack, another famous <laughs> person, when, when two famous people come together, it's been electric, am I right? <laughs> And that's why you should come to the Phoenix Celebrity <laughs> Theatre, <laughs> December second, because it will just be famous people <laughs> watching Jim talk about docking. Yeah, <laughs> twenty minutes. Jack, are you circumcised? You're British. You're probably not. I'm not. You probably have not. like a big fucking hooded skin. Big old hood on your fucking yeah. British Robin dick. Hood. What's <laughs> a British Steals dick? Steals from the rich and gives Spotted to the poor. So, <laughs> so I could get my nice pristine circumcised dick and line Did it up. Did you circumcise to it when you came to America? No. no, in no. Australia, it's all the sand. No, the Australia, previous podcast. we've talked about this. Yeah. In Australia, there's a lot of heat. It's Kangaroos crazy. are kicking sand in I your I thought dick. that was like a thing you get, like when you apply for an A1 visa, you have to go to the embassy. <laughs> okay, 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 okay Jack, 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 I've known you for a decade. I never became a British citizen, and, and there's a good reason for that. It's my pristine dick. Your pristine dick. Yeah, now you have a horrible hooded dick. I do not have a horrible hooded dick, and I will just... Dis- like, it's a lovely dick. Why is your dick lovely with your foreskin? I'm sure it smells of all type of British things. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it smells tea. of like and, tea uh, and and raping Indian people. Whoa! Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! Whoa, you could have just said like Indian cuisine or Indian something, cuisine. but you went yeah. 
right, okay, right, Indian cuisine. <laughs> Could have been anything else. <laughs> so anyway, so you, your 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 dick is mostly just cheese and chicken tikka masala. <laughs> what is that? Chicken tikka masala. Chicken tikka masala. So you show this dick to women, right? You actually pull it out and go, "This is my dick," with no sense of irony. I've never done that. I've never taken it out and showed it to anyone. What are you talking about? Oh, unless the, uh, it's been in, How, in a mutually you've been respectful in mo- environment. You've been in movies, wine scene, seen it. <laughs> on Mother's Day, there was never a right time to bring it out yeah. amongst those I got, ladies. I got, I got to be honest. Mother's Day is the worst time to see your dick. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston, what did you think of her? Was she a nice looking broad? Was she, uh, what am I? Good segue. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really uh, uncomfortable I, segue I, from my I, dick. I like, I like <laughs> that talk- I've become Frank Sinatra. Like, hey, <laughs> what do these dames look like? Was she a nice looking broad? Jane Hudson, tell me about it. You're kind of Larry Kinging him right now. Yeah, actually. I feel like if we're talking about dicks, let's stick on dicks. I'm going to drink your drink. You drink my drink. Stick on dicks. I That's pretty good. I, I like that. If we're on the topic of dicks, we should stick with dicks. Stick and not on move dicks. On to okay, the only a person who's not circumcised would say stick with dicks because your dick would probably stick to anything. My dick is not. It's, it's well It would kept. be a disgusting a well- British no. super. Fu- you know Name me this- one time in history where extra skin was a good thing. When some fat cunt loses, like, like a 500-pound cunt yeah. loses weight. Scott, where the fuck are you going? <laughs> let me tell you, you something. You sit back down. You, you sit back down. Put your fucking foreskin dick into this argument. You let me know how we come out on this dick situation. i got to go edit the show. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, right wait, 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 wait. Scott, you're acting like the show is the most important thing. We all know the podcast is the most important oh, Comedy thing. Central has made that clear, the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, like, um, I'll tell you something, Jack Wardle. <laughs> yes. I didn't want to do this podcast. <laughs> I, I'd rather be in my right, office I'm doing gonna, cocaine gonna, gonna right now. <laughs> but what happens is... <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know when you're on Facebook and you see like how something gets made and they speed it up really quick so you don't have to sit through the five-hour process? Yeah. I feel like that's how we've been watching you get drunk, Jim, this podcast. Like, you started off sober. <laughs> you got drunk in like 10 minutes. Of a... <laughs> I've, been, I've been very eloquent on this podcast. They, it's been great. It's jo- very entertaining. I hope people make it to the end. Of, if you just listen to the beginning, you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. Whatever, Jack okay. shows up with By the end, big all... fucking hooded dick. I expect <laughs> All the fucking credit in the world. I'm not going to take it. I feel like this this podcast ends, ends with me kissing Jim and getting punched. Yeah, I think that's where we have to go. We're I at the end here. We have to go. Um, All right, we have, we have to be good night. Okay, so everyone who's listening to the podcast, thank you for listening. Wait, before we go, Jack Whitehall. Are we gonna think oh, Jack Whitehall has yeah, things coming up. Yeah, he's, we, uh, we talked he, about he's, his Netflix he's, special. He's got his hood hooded yeah, show. I'm booked in for circumcision tomorrow morning now because I feel conscious about my. <laughs> Horrible, smelly. Be- before your appearance on Conan, it's so. not smelly, you said Jack. It smelt it's, of curry. It's not smelly. It's just unsightly. Unsightly. Okay. Um, so I uh, really want to show it to you right now. Jack will be. Not, uh, just show me a dick. Just show me a dick. I'm not showing Jack. Just show me a dick. Show me a dick. Jim. A little we've bit. We've been friends for a little bit. A little bit. A decade. Been this before. I can't believe we've ever truly been friends. Because if we're truly being friends, I would have seen your dick. Forrest, how many times have you seen my dick? I don't even know. Countless. Have okay. you seen my dick? Okay, okay. I love how I love how Forrest is so dumb that he thinks it's countless. <laughs> like who can get to number eighty-seven and then go? Oh, I forgot about counting. Well, it's no. the thing about I when you remember, see someone's yeah. dick, you don't really tally it up. Like, and let me I put that in my diary. I've seen. Yeah, I've seen I have a, a journal. I've sh- I used to share a lot of rooms with Jim, so I'd see his dick a lot. Yeah, but in the early days, I, don't think I suffered from a lot of depression. So when I did, when I started doing theaters and I had a support act, I used to like to have them sleep in the same room as me. Oh, uh, and, you would, even, you would, and you would masturbate yeah, when I was snoring, right? Even That's still, I, I had a girlfriend and a child. I wasn't going to fuck anything. I was trying to be a faithful sort of guy. So I used to wait till Forrest fell asleep and snored, and then I'd masturbate. That was when he knew it was safe. Yeah, yeah. on his face. <laughs> I'd wake up and be like, "Started off so charming." I feel like I got apnea. <laughs> it is sweet that I was such a good guy. It's so sweet, and then it suddenly went. To <laughs> and, and Forrest, grim place. Forrest couldn't explain why he was gaining weight so rapidly. Because <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that my cum is high caloric count. High. Uh. A lot of calories in my cum. <laughs> Mostly because I always like my cum to be fed with fried chicken. Yeah, I've 
I don't wow, know. that's the end of the show. Right I don't know there. what's happening right good, now. I think it's a good okay, out right Everyone, there. ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Maybe my favorite podcast, Jack Whitehall. Thank you very much. I've everybody. missed you. <laughs> I've missed you. You are, you <laughs> are, you are a fucking, <laughs> you are a gent. You are one of the most talented young men I've ever met. You are one of the least talented old people I've ever met. <laughs> um, your face looks like it should be covered in cum, so it looks appropriate. <laughs> Oh, well, here we go. But I adore you. (laughs) Good night, everyone. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Jack Whitehall, for being here. Please subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And no dicks were taken out during the making of this podcast. Thanks. There was dicks. (laughs)